Yes, everyone, welcome back to the channel. New name for us to talk about, Jeremy Frimpong. Now, he has been strongly linked with United as United are looking to try and add some competition or depth to the right-back area. Obviously, Delo's having a great season, but like outside of Delo, you're like, not really a lot of options. Uh, and Frimpong knows the city. He is a product of Manchester City's academy. He was there from nine years of age till 18. And he's had a bit of a wild 18-month, two years, really. He's recently moved to Leverkusen for a fee of around about 10 million after impressing with uh, Scottish Premier League side Celtic. He actually got one of the match on his debut playing for Celtic. Um, and he's absolutely shot up the different age groups for the Netherlands. He's Dutch. Um, impressing in each age group that he's been in and then moving on to the next. And the rise has continued. He's also earned a call up from the Netherlands in their provisional squad list without ever having made an appearance. This is for the World Cup. Um, in the senior team. So this rise and this continued form that he's displaying um, has started to attract some of the biggest clubs in the world, including the recent rumours, um, because obviously being Dutch, and you know, we've got form for it, let's be honest, Ten Hag needing a right back, it's a very easy link to make, whether or not there's much truth in it, but it's worth us doing a scout report on him to see what he's all about anyway. Rimpong's managed to actually score five goals in 11 appearances for Bayer Leverkusen this season. He's got two assists in their fixture against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. He had a direct impact in the final third from a deep role. And when you look at the way United's fullbacks are being utilised at the moment, you look at him and you go, wow, absolutely. He's in the 96th percentile uh, against all of the fullbacks for, for touches in the attacking penalty area. He's carried the ball into the opposition box 50 times, which is an extreme high number for someone who starts in the defensive line. In progressive carries and dribbles, he is in the 98th percentile for both. And in the 11 games he's played in Bundesliga this year, he's created 30 shot creating actions. If you're looking to be progressive with the ball in the final third, you're looking to have a, an impact or some sort of a chance creation from the right back area. This guy's going to deliver you that in buckets. His playing style, uh, explosive is the word that you want to shout when you watch him. He's become one of the most promising young players on the scene. Um, and like I said, he's, he's got standout abilities when it comes to dribbling, but explosivity is and it's probably the one that you notice the most. He's got great technical qualities, which obviously you get that through coming through City's Academy and you get that you know being Dutch as well. The, the two things kind of go hand in hand. Um, it allows him to keep the ball close to his feet at all times. He's, allowed, he's able to deceive defenders, can dribble past defenders. The low centre of gravity that he's got allows him to be able to quickly change direction and speed while dribbling. That makes him very, very difficult to tackle. And you can see in the positions that he takes up uh, and the way he plays when he's attacking that he's much more than a, like a right winger than he is a right back. Pace comes into it, especially in the final third. He's always looking to make a creative pass. And it can also be very decisive creating or making recovery tackles when the opposition team is on a counter-attack. He's, unlike some right backs, he's still got a real defender's instinct in him and real sort of internal drive to be able to to make tackles and the tenacity to to put himself in the right positions in fact he's only got a a 30.8 percent success rate in aerial duels shows that's probably the part of the game that he's weak at what's more worrying or might be more worrying that this is all in the right channel uh and it usually comes up against wingers who on average aren't really the tall sort of aerial threats that you would get um say from a number nine and that highlights obviously a, a bit of a weakness in his game where if he was to play a fullback for manchester united in the premier league gonna have crosses coming in one of the roles that's expected of a fullback is to always stack against the back post uh allow the two other center halves to get forward get towards the front post cover the front post in the center of the goal you've got to provide some aerial ability at the back post, the crosses that are coming into the box. And this isn't a height issue. It was never a height issue uh, with Lissandro Martinez because his heading ability and the, the amount of duels that he won were very high. Uh, and it's not that Frimpong's a, a tiny player. He's not. I think he's about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, um, but he doesn't win aerial duels. Um, he just doesn't. 
So you could find him targeted in those sort of situations as crosses are coming into the back post. Um, but if the other aspects of his game outweigh the negatives, then there's still a net positive to be had here. And while he, while he might be weaker when it comes for aerial duels, um, he more than makes up for it when it comes to the 1v1 defending. This is not um, a Trent regen. His pace, as we've mentioned, and his low centre of gravity means that he is a tenacious 1v1 defender. Really good 1v1 defender. Um, jockeys fantastically well. He doesn't really dive into tackles. He can wait for attackers to try and beat him for pace, which he, he knows in a race that he, he's going to win every single time. And I think he would be a great addition to the squad to give the low some competition. A little bit like what we've, we've ended up with with Malassia and Shaw. <clears throat> and it could lead to a move away for Aaron Wambasaka. In terms of the cost, you would expect that uh, Leverkusen are probably going to want to double their money or more. 25-ish million would probably be quite a fair price for him. He's only 21. He's on the cusp of embarking on an international career. I look at the qualities that he exhibits as a player. And I look at what Ten Hag's bought previously. He looks like a player with a decent character. He's, he's played in Scotland, obviously. He's played a long time in England without making a first-team debut at City. He's gone over to the Bundesliga. He's looked fantastic. He scores goals, creates goals everywhere he's been. He's impressed everywhere he's been. He's impressed all the way through the youth sides. Enough to the point Louis van Gaal's called him up for the Dutch national team squad without getting a debut yet. This is a player on the up, and I, I think there's so much qualities about him. <clears throat> like I said, the aerial threat thing, or the aerial duels thing, there's a concern there, without a shadow of a doubt. I'm not sitting here saying this is a perfect player at all. There is a concern there, and there's a risk there. And it's how much you want to value that one aspect of somebody's game. Paul Parker didn't have a great aerial threat. Gary Neville didn't have a great aerial threat. They made up with it by doing everything else in their game with tenacity, intensity, and quality. And if that's what Frimpong can do, then I don't see why you wouldn't bring him in as a sign-in. What he offers in the final third is goals. He creates goals. You know, he will score goals himself. He can become an assist monster. And the, the defending from him would really suit. If United want to play on the halfway line, you've got to have pace in the back line. Pace in the fullback area. This kid has got pace for days. Pace on the recovery is there all day long. I can really see him slotting into the way Manchester United play and becoming an asset. And have you seen him? Anyone got any thoughts on him? If you have, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.